Jeremy Cook here, and today I've got something that I'm really excited to show off. It's a clock with a minute hand on the bottom, an hour hand on the left, and then another hour hand on the right. Each gear is linked together, and the idea is that one hand can be set to your, to your time zone, and the other hand can be set to whatever time zone you want, whether that be, say, the East Coast US and the West Coast US, Germany, England, or whatever else. Whatever you need to reference at any one time, you can, you can have it available. The clock is meant to hang on the wall, and it's uh, powered by an external supply. You can see it's got little marks for the hours and the minutes, the minute hands as well. It's got a little stepper on the top. It's got a real-time clock unit, which, which supplies information to an Arduino Nano that runs the whole thing. And then when you need to advance it, you just press this button, and if it gets too fast, you just unplug it. The real-time clock keeps, keeps things ticking while it's off. So that's how it works. Let's go ahead and see how I made it. The device is powered by a mini USB power supply, but originally I thought I'd use a, a rechargeable battery like one of those lipstick packs that charge a um, 18650 cell. That's why there's a, a rectangular cutout. I was going to have that sit in there and then when it, everything got locked down with these standoffs and some 1032 screws, or some button head screws I should say. The idea that it would just kind of encapsulate and keep it there. In the end, I use it from some different electronics. The four holes are meant to, to position the, the middle, which is kind of the, the gear reduction gear. And then the two sides are the hour, hour hands, of course. And the bottom will be the minute hand. In the end, I use the same, same sort of gear on the top to drive it just for some more gear reduction. Basically, for every minute, for every rotation of the minute hand, the, the hour hand goes goes through one twelfth of a revolution. So, yeah, and that's that's shared between the left and the right hand. So, however much you've got one offset from the other, it, it maintains that offset, but it advances throughout the day. These little circles, I actually cut those in and then put some paint on it later, so that marks everything off, so you can tell what time it is a little bit easier. On the left, you got PST and EST for Pacific Standard Time and Eastern Standard Time. Didn't actually put that in because I thought that might be my change later. And in fact, I usually use Eastern for the left and then Pacific for the right. And if you're wondering how I actually made it, I'm not gonna go through that really, but if you go to add-ins and then there's there's some scripts and you just scroll down and there's two, two gear strip scripts. So you can open that up, put in all your all your settings like, you know, diameter, number of teeth, etc. etc. and then uh, that'll that'll form the gears for you. Pretty pretty neat tool. And the inside, just just like on this one, the inside's got a flat on it so you can be driven by that little little stepper motor. There's the minute hand, same sort of thing except I made the outside a little bit bigger so it'll be easier to read. And then the the actual hand has got a chamfer on the inside so it got printed upside down. There's the original parts being printed out, all the gears, more gears there than are actually used because, well, you know, you know how that goes. I made that little triangular stand so I could try it out without destroying some polycarbonate to begin with. and had to drill it out because I didn't, didn't leave enough room. So I guess that's the penalty for, for poor design is got to do little manual operations. Press fit with quarter inch aluminum dowels. Eventually I changed those to dowel pins, which uh, makes things a little bit easier, even though they cost more. Things are advancing nicely there, but you can kind of tell there's quite a bit of friction. So I, I didn't know whether I'd have enough gear reduction in the stepper itself to get it to get it rolling smoothly. I, I think it could probably work if, if things were set up correctly, but as you can see here, it, it's kind of Kind of questionable as to whether it'll move or not and with a clock you need to have it move exactly every time or else it's just going to be off all the time now i will say the clock has been off just a little bit i'm still maybe trying to figure out the programming you know maybe maybe really i need some sort of feedback as far as like a magnet to, to zero out things or whatever but I'll, I'll go over that a little bit later but for now here's me cutting out everything on my cnc router something apparently wasn't going right but it turned out fine. I 
I do a little, a little scraping to account for, for my dis discretions on the design. And then here's some standoffs that I could use. Got to put the, put the footage of me taking off the cover because that's always, always interesting. And there's the battery that I was talking about, the 18650 cell. Again, I didn't use that, but I, I think that's, I think that's a good, a good design if, if it was more power efficient. So once I got the dowel pins, I, I realized that I, actually I needed a bit of a spacer. So I made these spacers that are a press fit for the dowel pins as well as this installation tool. So all you have to do is put in a device, crank it down, and in theory, it'll be exactly the, the right distance pushed in. I should mention I got a new device. So when I get that video done, I'll put a link to it in the upper right hand, just, and, um, you know, link thing. So check that out. It's, it's pretty, it's pretty cool. But after this was done, I just kind of forgot about the project for quite a while. And after that, I, I upgraded several of my cameras. So you can see the results here. There's the new, one of the new gears, the driving gear. And then this is another gear. And then that's the, that's the minute gear. And then this is the results after I put everything together, looking pretty good. But what's not good is that the, that the stepper motor is actually not locked down yet. It's very much a prototype. Everything's laid out on a breadboard which is the right way to do things. Not that I always do it that way. So to lock down the stepper, drilled with this center drill. Thought I'd, thought I'd keep this in there just to show off my new, my new camera. It's a Sony A6600. I'm really pleased with how well the footage turns out. So hopefully, hopefully the transition isn't too jarring into a higher quality here, but yeah, thought it was worth, worth showing off. So I drilled the pilot holes there for a 632 screw, and then I decided to tap it on the on the mill, which usually I just do by hand, but what I didn't think about it was how I would actually reverse it and then get it out. I, I, there's a function on it for actually tapping, which I think takes care of that, but again, I hadn't really thought of it. So yeah, I have to, have to come up with a little bit better, better method. Questionable methods or not, the 632 screw did fit in nicely. Looking good, and there's the stepper. Obviously, I was kind of eyeballing it at that point. It's always a little bit, a little bit nerve-wracking when you don't have a, a good CNC setup to get things exactly correct or as close as reasonably possible. But looks, looks pretty good. Look at that. Love that. Love that granite-style PLA, and then the, the green PLA is just what I had in my in my machine. So that's what it turned out with, and. It, Turns out to match match pretty well. You can see this the um, real time clock module integrated into it, and then the the button it just advances it. So if you need to set your clock, if it's off for a bit, if it's too fast, you just unplug it, and if it's too slow, you just press this button and it advances fa faster. And looking pretty good. So let's go ahead and take a really quick look at the code. I won't go about through this line by line, but the, the basic idea is that you've got a real time clock running here in a library. Basically when it gets to, when the second digit equals zero, then it triggers the, the stepper to move, to move the minute hand one minute, which is in this case is 34 steps. It's also got some functionality in it, the, the code that I have now to, to skip a step every once in a while, because the, the uh, number of steps per revolution is actually not a whole number. So things get a little bit crazy here. Also, one cool thing is that at the end, the digital write 8, 9, 10, and 11 low makes it, saves a lot of power. So it doesn't just stay on like sucking power all the time. Again, this is a bit of a work in progress. So I'll upload it to uh, at least one version to GitHub so you can, you can check it out yourself and critique if you like. Moving on though, I thought from here it would be good to solder everything together. I thought that would be the, the way to go. In the end, attaching things to an Arduino Nano like this is is quite uh, quite annoying. Um, put a capacitor on here between the five volts and the ground, I believe, to you know even out any sort of voltage spikes when the when the stepper would go. Really, I should be wiring that to a separate power supply, I think, but. Well, you know, you can't always follow the rules with this kind of thing, right? Well, nonetheless. 
this didn't really work that well. It, it looks looks to me like one of the one of the connections was not not very good. You could see one of them not lighting up, and you could see just skipping skipping around from from some steps here, almost like it was. I think it was just trying to fire the stepper with like two or like like three or maybe maybe like three and a half coils. So rather than mess with more electronics, more more soldering. I decided to make this slimline nano and slim slim driver board. That way, it was slim, basically these things, it's got 90 degree headers on it. So basically I just discarded everything I had here besides maybe, well, besides maybe the, maybe the button and real time clock module and decided to use these jumper, female jumper wires. The, the four pin wires are pretty cool. That's for RC equipment, I believe, but it, goes from the the driver board to the nano pretty well one one cool trick that I use here to avoid to avoid even more soldering is I use the button use I think it was pin 5 as an input a pull input pull up so I didn't even have to use a resistor to ground and then I use another input as it was just low I just kept it low all the time so if I if it was close to that it would be low and I wouldn't have to worry about trying to solder on another ground which always seems like a big a big problem with this kind of thing. Use hot glue to fasten everything down. You know, screws are probably better, but I think, you know, if if, um, if hot glue was was growing on a farm or something, I could get a, a sponsorship from from the hot glue commission or something. I mean, that doesn't really exist. Nonetheless, it looks looks pretty good here. Only thing is, it was a little, little bit noisy, I'm trying to change from from minute to minute, so. That just wasn't gonna work when I'm trying to work and I just hear this this every every minute or so. So I stuffed the whole thing with Vaseline. Thought that might work. Um, and you know, lo and behold it, it did actually work pretty well. You can you can barely hear it now. Also those um, those dowel pins that are sticking out. I ended up ordering some, I think it was half inch dowel pins just to keep it Keep it nice and nice and flat so I can hang it on the wall. Put some more petroleum petroleum jelly on the on the minute hand on the bottom. The cool thing about this is that you know if it's got too much lubrication, it just kind of kind of seeps off and goes onto the other gear. So eventually it just basically lubricates everything, which is nice. There's the setting button that's nice to nice to test everything out too. To make sure it was easy to see see which which hour it was pointing at and the minute as well, I I filled this in with with the orange the orange paint pen. This one I cut too too deep and ended up poking that out a little bit. So I tried to fix it with super glue, cyanoacrylate glue, and yeah, that didn't work too well. When I tried to to rub it off, it just got everywhere. And even after trying to remove it with some goo gone, it's still just look kind of a stain on it. So if you've got an idea for removing CNA glue, do do let me know in the comments. At this point, I realized that one thing I'd forgotten was to put a hole in it to actually hang it on the wall. And one thing I'd forgotten to do here was to actually figure out the center of gravity. I just, just estimated based on, you know, wh whatever. <coughs> But it wasn't as critical as as the uh, driving gear, so I thought I could just just kind of fake it. In the end, I had to go back and drill out again, which I didn't show. But you'll notice at the beginning, it's it's actually a slot, not a hole. So held that down. That got pretty hot. So an, another thing to again to make it easier to see, print out these little little gear hands, I guess you'd say, or so our hands out of green PLA worked out pretty well and then a little bit more of uh, petroleum jelly to the bottom there because I got it open why not why not do that went together with no problem no problem actually it was actually pretty easy to get it on that one time <laughs> not that you know now that I've done it like 10 times but look at that, it's, it looks beautiful. I, it turned out just about like I thought it would. And the center of gravity is not, not quite where I thought it was, but everything's correctable with enough time.
So to, to set the gears up, you've got the clock on the left, which is, you know, say 12 o'clock and the clock on the on my right or, or your left, which is three hours behind that. So basically you've got you've got 12 o'clock on the East Coast and then nine o'clock on the Pacific Coast in the in the in the US, United States of America, where I live. Obviously, you could do this for anything you wanted. I mean, you know, if you got a, you know, if you do a podcast with somebody in Germany, you could set it for Germany, or you know, if you do a lot of business in England or whatever else, you could set it, set it for that. And um, yeah, it's pretty cool. I mean, obviously, you could figure this out yourself, but it's nice to be able to just look up at the wall and have a nice reference. And even if it's a little bit off, it's, I guess, you could just call it a kinetic sculpture. So, so thanks, thanks so much for watching. I, um, I really enjoyed this build and I'm glad to get it done. So hope you check back sometime. And this is Jeremy S. Cook signing off. One thing I mentioned earlier was that this, this project took me nearly a year, maybe even more to complete. And part of the reason for that was not just that I took a break between, you know, for whatever reason, when it was seemed successful, I just kind of forgot about it. The other part was that originally I thought it'd have four hands with NEMA 17 stepper motors. You could see me disassembling it here. And I think just what happened was, I think I just got a little bit ahead of myself as far as what I could do from a programming and wiring standpoint. Perhaps you'll find it inspiring. Thanks again for watching.